So hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me on this presentation where I'll be talking about chaining props within selector composition, um, where I will be taking you through step-by-step -step how you can uh, get data from your Redux store if and it's being cross-referenced. Uh, something about me, uh, I started programming around four to five years ago uh, when I was at college. Uh, Learning about JavaScript really made me want to go to backend more than uh, front end. But after learning about React and Redux, it kind of clicked for me. I liked it a lot. So in the end, I kind of stuck with uh, front end development. And the uh, thing about Redux is that it kind of made sense to me when I was looking at it. But there was one particular thing that I kind of was stumped. And this is something that I want to share with you guys. So. The thing that I found hard to um, get my wrap my head around how to deal with it was uh, when the Redux state was sort of normalized. Uh, what I mean by that is when you have a state like this, right? You have a list of objects, of post objects, each with their own uh, user object. And then beyond, you have like comments, and they have their own offer. You can see that there is a lot of data duplication. The user object is. Uh, duplicated in multiple places. So what the Redux documentation suggests is to follow a certain set of rules where you can turn this sort of a shape into something that looks like this. You can see that each substate uh, has its own uh, entity or is uh, processing its own entity. You can see that it's divided by posts, comments, and uh, users, which very similarly mimics the thing uh, that you can see, for example, in databases where each table stands or for its own domain or entity, if you will. And this thing like made a lot of sense to me. Again, I was like learning about databases back then. So this like was uh, pretty straightforward. But the thing that I said I was stumped upon is if I want to get uh, the user data, but only having the post uh, object, how do I navigate from the user from the post state to the user state using only the user ID. Something that you won't need to know about Redux is that the way we uh, access data from Redux is through functions called selectors, uh, which basically take the state, uh, the application state, and props, which are sort of optional parameters that you can use to sort of navigate through the Redux state. Uh, another thing that you might come across when dealing with the Redux uh, environment is the create selector utility function from the reselect library, uh, where uh, it takes a bunch of selectors, uh, gets the return value, and these return values are then fed to a combiner function where you can sort of compute the some sort of a data or return or value from the stuff that you have in your state. So to illustrate this, let's create a simple selector. Uh, we want to just get the uh, the body of the data of, of the post in our Redux state. So here you can see that we will create uh, this post selector. It takes the state, and you can see that through the dot notation, it sort of navigates through the whole state and gets to the post object that we need. And to sort of have a granular uh, access to like all the uh, keys of that post object. We use another selector uh, with create selector where we uh, use the get post selector, feed it to the create selector, and in a combiner, you just access the body from it. It's much easier for you uh, to see it in action. So I will switch to a live demo. And again, you can see if I access, if I call this function, it will get the data uh, point in the state that I've highlighted. So let's switch over to a live demo where, we're, we, where we will spend most of our time together. As you can see here in line four and five, it's the same thing that I've just shown on the slide. Uh, you can see here, I lock the state. And when we go through the, st through the state, uh, you can see that I'm accessing this bacon ipsum I have for my post uh, component. And you can see it's rendered here. So it's been accessed successfully through, this, through these selectors. Now, this is the easy part when it comes to getting data from the selectors. Uh, again, the thing that I was stunned was, how do I get the data from the user? 
because I want to show the name of the user or its image URL or maybe even other things, uh, activity or age data, whatever you, whatever you want. So this is the part here. And when I first started out looking at this, uh, my first naive exam, my first naive approach was like this. So we still need our uh, offer ID from the state. So simple enough, we create a selector for it that gets the offer, it, offer ID. And then this is the following part that, uh, is, that I used in order to get the user data. So the first thing uh, you can see here is that is this sort of the identity function where you, you know, pass an argument and get the same argument out. In this case, it's the application state. Uh, the second the second selector we'll use is the one that we've just created the off, to get the offer ID. Now we in our combiner we now have the state and the offer ID, and we use those two uh, arguments or those two values and passing it to a different uh, selector that deals with the user data. So in our case, the get username, which I have uh, defined here. You can see it follows a very similar pattern with our post selectors. So nothing uh, weird there. And analogically, you can do the same thing with the image, uh, where instead of the username, you just use the get user image. And as you can see, like on, on this side, it works, like the data is accessed uh, fine, but you know you might have some reservations about this sort of a pattern. Uh, you can see that this sort of a state, identity state is very sketch, very smelly. And the reason why is because selectors are usually used only to get a certain substate of, a state, of, of our Redux state and not the whole thing. So that's already a little bit sketch. Uh, the other thing uh, that you might have noticed is that uh, these two selectors are very, very similar. So we are sort of duplicating code here, duplicating the same functionality that we can you know, sort of abstract. So how can we sort of resolve this? One of my other approaches, uh, a very naive approach was to, instead of getting the username and user image using those two selectors, to get the whole get, uh, user object. What I mean by that, so instead of having uh, it like this, uh, I would get uh, just the user object using basically the same thing that we've just done before uh, with offer ID and uh, state. And instead of feeding it to these sort of specific granular selectors, we feed it to the get user uh, selector, which gives us the whole user object. And then so from there, we sort of decompose it into the, our needed data that we need from the user. So in our case, it's uh, offer name and offer image URL. And again, it works fine. Like you can see, again, renders everything perfectly fine. And uh, we kind of got rid of a little bit of duplication, but not entirely. And we still haven't got, gotten, gotten rid of this weird state identity function, but it works. Though I have to argue that this is e probably an even worse approach because you will have to sort of uh, replicate this pattern in other selectors as well. What I mean by that, if we look at our comment uh, selectors, and uh, compare it with our post selector. For our comments, we also need to do the same thing. We need to get the author's name, maybe the image, basically the same thing that we have done with the post uh, selectors. But as you can see here, uh, they are eerily similar. So we didn't really get rid of any duplication, but we sort of pushed it into a higher level. And I would even argue that this is very wrong from a architectural and structural uh, viewpoint. And to illustrate this, um, you really want your selectors to be as close to your domain as possible. Otherwise, let's say, for example, for your refactoring purposes, you want to go to your store and change the keys from username to, uh, from name to username, from image URL to avatar URL. Now you would have to do this in all the selectors where you've used this uh, th this pattern here because of this sort of a dot notation here. Like in the 
first case scenario, your application will just crash because you might have forgotten it in a place or another. In um, the best case scenario, if you're using TypeScript, you know, the right application won't even run, but it's going to tell you where you've got it wrong. But in both cases, you still need to uh, change it in multiple places, except for the one, except uh, uh, you have to change it in multiple places. Um, if you, but if you only use, you know, the actual selector for getting the user uh, name and user uh, image URL, uh, you wouldn't have to have that problem. So again, as I said, we've basically tried to abstract this sort of a duplication, but we pushed it in a whole different level. So how do we resolve this in a clean, simple, reusable way, right? And this is where we go back to our naive example, right? And sort of uh, distill it into two steps. Uh, the first step I'd like to call is the props creation process, right? So you are trying at this point to create an intermediary props from one of your selectors. And then in the second step, this intermediary props you are you're passing to a different selector. And the nice thing about having a decompose like this is that we can actually create functions uh, that deal with each of these steps. So we can reuse them in uh, different places. So let's go about creating these uh, these functions. I have here a utils file uh, prepared. Whoops, let's close all, close all. Let's open it here. And I call these functions create props extender for the props creation and compose props for like passing the props. And for our create props extender, uh, you can see that we need a key name like the prop name that we want to extend the props and the selector, which is going to be the value for our new prop. And this function will return another selector. We can see, uh, in this, we know that selectors take state and props and the return value of that particular selector will be uh, the same props that we've passed, but enhanced with the, our arguments that we've passed props. So create okay, props extender. And now for our compose props, um, we will need to pa pass two selectors that we sort of want to chain the props in between. And the reason why I've uh, ordered the arguments like this is it follows like this sort of a function composition uh, convention where you feed the data or the arguments from right to left, and I just stuck with this convention. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our intermediary props from the selector one, the first selector. And then this selector uh, we want to pass to the, or not selector, sorry, the props that we've just created. We want to pass it to a second, to the second selector. Turn two takes the same state, but now it takes the intermediary props. Now, if I that, so uh, let's get rid of this. This is no bueno, and uh, start composing a, or using our two functions that we just created. So the very first thing is we need the props extender. So let's create that one. Post offer ID props extender. We call our uh, function that we just created. Key name will be ID. We want the new prop to be called ID. And its value is going to be the value from our get post offer ID selector. Now, uh, Having that, we can now start sort of composing the selectors uh, together. So now instead of using this create selector uh, pattern, we'll get rid of it and use our compose props uh, utility. Final selector that we want to call is uh, get username in this case, because we want to get the username from the offer. So get the uh, user name. And we pass in our props uh, 
our props extender that we just created to get the props with the uh, offer ID that we can pass as props to the get username selector. And uh, as you can see, it works fine. We can we can see that the name has appeared here, and an analogically we can do this we can do the same thing uh, with our image. So if I copy this and paste it here, with the only difference being the user image. Again, you can see the user image appears here just fine. And we've done all of this with less code and the thing is that it's reusable all right and i could have ended the um, presentation here uh, but this is there's more and i want to leave you with this sort of thought because we've created two functions and we encapsulated this functionality that uh for in, inside two functions you can do uh, whatever you want with these functions. You can extend it, you can um, make some op optimizations to it. And for example, one of the things that we do at Muse, for example, is um, we create these selectors uh, via array mapping. So if I get rid of this and show you this, you can basically uh, put these user selectors in an array and map them to our pattern, to our compose props pattern, where it will be called with the props extender. And you will get these two uh, selectors out of it. And the thing is that you can extend it with any uh, offer data you want. If you want get user age, you use get user age, and then it will spit out get post offer age if you wish to use it in your application. So thank you very much for uh, attending my uh, my talk. Uh, this is the QR code on a blog post that I've written uh, regarding this. There's more information about uh, TypeScript, for example, how we can use TypeScript with these two utilities. And yeah, again, thank you very much for uh, attending. Uh, první otázka je, jestli je těžký se naučit Redux pro člověka, který pracuje s Reactem uh, už asi tři roky. Uh, já si myslím, že ne. Uh, já jsem teda začal, když, když, když jsem začal s Reactem, tak to ani nebyl Redux, ale byl to Flux. To byl jako ten jako prvotní uh, state management, který uh, Facebook nějak uh, používal, ale pak jsem to vzal k Reduxu. A ano, trošku tam uh, pro mě to bylo těžké se, se v tom orientovat, protože to bylo, ty, ty, ty dva jakoby, architektury byly relat trochu jiný, ale ten Redux sam je teda vítězil, protože prostě ten celý stav máte jako v jednom objektu a s tím se jako fakt lépe se dá um, jako nad tím přemýšlet, ne? jako nad tím aplikaci, nad tím stavem té aplikaci. A je to, je, je tam, jak, uh, jak bych to měl říct, uh, jako je tam encouraged, <laughs> zase čeština. Dopuručeno. Dopuručeno, uh, prostě používat funkcionální přístupy, co je jako imutabilita hmm. a ty funkcionální, uh, ty funkcionální přístup, jak dostat prostě ty uh, data z toho, z toho stavu. Uh, takže zpátky ty otáce, já si myslím, že ne. Jako ty dokumentace k tomu Reduxu je fakt super a pokud se, pokud se chceš naučit uh, Redux, uh, tak stačí jenom projít tu dokumentaci jsou ještě hafec uh, jiných jako tutoriálů na to a myslím si, že je fakt relativně jednoduchý se k tomu dostat. Uh, super, děkuji. Uh, další otázka tady je, jestli nejsou selektory pomalí, protože oni občas musí běžet několikrát uh, mm -hmm. během jednoho třeba updateu. Jasně, to je pravda, to, to záleží, jak ty selektory, kde se volají uh, a jak se ještě upravený, protože třeba ten create selektor má tu funkcionalitu, dá se říct, která, kde se prostě ty, 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 ty hodnoty memoizují. To znamená, že se nemusí jakoby několikrát jakoby pře, přepočítat, ale už je to někde jakoby memoizovaný. A taky záleží, jak ten, tak ty reaktový komponenty jsou napojený, protože někdy ty selektory se volají hodně, protože je tam tu na jako update, na tu komponentu. Takže pokud tak 
ta aplikace je nějak pomalá, tak nejdřív bych se koukal, jak se ty selektory volejí, jak se updateuje ten, ty, ty komponenty a pak potom bych se koukal, jestli ty selektory jako na, na, to, na to mají vliv. Mm-hmm, jo. Uh... A teď já tady mám jednu otázku asi za sebe, protože já se koukám, že ty tam máš nějaký utils. Předpokládám, že tam možná bude i víc funkcí. Plánujete tady ty funkce minimálně ten Compose Props nějak dát jako knihovničku pro ten reselect? A to nemáme zatím v plánu. Máme to jakoby v interní, interní knihovničku, je to napsané v TypeScriptu, ale pokud chcete používat... Chci. Ten, 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 ten kód nebo ty, fun, ty, ty funkce, tak na tom, jako na tom blog postu jsem, mám, je to tam, je, je tam ten kód, plus, jestli to je v, chceš v TypeScriptu, tak je to taky v TypeScriptu. Jaký máte ten use case, že máte vaši aplikaci, nebo stav vaší aplikace tak zanořený, že to musíte normalizovat a jestli ten stav taky ukládáte třeba do local storage, než ho posíláte na backend? Ne, tak ten stav nemáme nějak zanořený už relativně od začátku. To máme vymyšlené tak, že ty, ty entity, které tu stáváme třeba z backendu přes API, tak je fakt máme uh, podstatě strukturovaný tak, že každý ten substates řeší uh, jednu entitu. Je to user, je to uh, nějaký komentář nebo blog posty, nebo v našem případě teda enterprise a a accounty a, 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 a podobně. Um, takže ne, my jsme, my jsme to měli takhle už jakoby relativně od začátku a je to tak, že je to takový, dejme tomu, spole, uh, takový common, common substate, kde máme několik modulů, které potřebují prostě tu, tu, samou, tu samou věc. Třeba usery. Máme, máme, nějaký, máme moduly, kde, který se, více modulů v naší aplikaci, které se prostě potřebují mít údaje o nějakého usera. Takže máme tam prostě jenom tuhle entitu user, kde se napojí jako více těch modů do toho. 